Okay, so. All right. So what I'd like to do here is showcase a little bit of differences between this ASCAR M54 OAG off-axis guider and the ASCAR M54 filter drawer that I purchased and compare with my existing ZWO off-axis guider and ZWO M42 filter drawer that I've been using. And some of the differences and why I went ahead and purchased this one when I already had one. What is the difference? So I already did an unboxing video where I showed how I attach these. Let's show some of the differences here. So let's look at off-axis guiders. So, as it's supplied, this is the ZWO off-axis guider compared to the ASCAR off-axis guider. This is an M48 thread here. This is an M42 thread. It comes with a different adapter here for M48 here. I think they I bought this used, but I think it comes with the M48 to M42 thread. Mine didn't include that when I bought it. But the thickness of this it's different than the thickness of this. And that creates a problem for interoperability. So getting this and attaching it to a filter drawer from ZWO is not gonna work. Likewise, connecting this to this filter drawer is not gonna work if you want to achieve 55 millimeter back focus, which is the primary uh, common back focus you need to get when you're working with refractors with uh, reducer field flatteners. So, the primary reason I went with this system is the diameter of this hole and the size of this prism. I talked a little bit about that. In fact, I measured it. Oops, this, this goes with this. I measured on this ASCAR OAG. Here you can see the difference. And for me, I think this is easily one of the key differences between these two. Definitely. So, this being a little bit more versatile, but also having this larger thing. So I thought it was eight point, um, 8.5 millimeters, but it turned out it was 8.9 millimeters. Actually, let's verify that here. In case you didn't see the other video. It's a round hole, about 8.9 millimeters in, thick, in uh, diameter. This one, Five point five millimeters in diameter, and that's a big difference. The prism on this is an eight by eight prism, but this hole is what really matters. That could be a twelve by twelve prism, and this hole would still restrict it. The prism on here is ten by ten, which is larger. One of the reasons why this is a little bit thicker, but this hole here being eight point nine gives you a lot more room to work with. So, um, the other thing I like about this, this one is it comes with a helical focuser. Otherwise, you'd have to uh, take out these set screws. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, either, either or. If it didn't have a helical focuser to actually focus your guide camera, you'd have to unscrew these and pull that out, really, to focus it. Or, 
move your guide camera on this. I'll show you how that's done on the ZWO. Thankfully, ZWO sells one of these helical focusers. And I chose to buy it, uh, buy it. So when I bought that, it's like, okay, that, that, that made a difference. So with that, here's the ZWO version helical focuser, which works very well. The cost for these new, this in US dollars uh, is $179. Uh, this is $128 for the ZWO version, and this helical focuser is $59. And if you buy them together, it's $187. So $8 difference, uh, not very much. Uh, I wouldn't let that price difference uh, sway you. But I think the performance of that having a larger diameter is key. Um, when it comes to your sensor size. So here, a ZWO ASI 174mm Mini. That's the size of your sensor. And I had a diagram that I drew up in, on the computer to really sort of visualize the differences. But if you have this and your sensor size, has to go through that aperture, you can see you're wasting more than half of the sensor. This is their most expensive uh, mini guide camera that ZWO sells. And, you know, and they tout it like, oh, well, if you buy this one, you can see more stars. Well, that's true if you have an off-axis guider that actually can utilize the entire sensor. This one can't. So if you use this ZWO off-axis guider with this camera, you're wasting it. Now, if you do have the ZWO ASI 290mm Mini, which I recently just purchased off of Cloudy Nights, so someone was selling one, got a good deal actually. The sensor size on here is much more compatible with that. Although this hole even is too small for this uh, by a little bit. Not by much, just a tiny bit of the corners. But for the most part, this matches this. Um, this has smaller pixels, pixels than this, so there's some other differences. Um, so the reason to get the larger sensor, typically the longer focal length you have, the more uh, valuable this is. So uh, I would say for smaller refractors, or smaller telescope setups that where you want to use an off-axis guider. I don't know, 500 millimeters, certainly under a thousand. Um, this probably works pretty well. And I actually did use this. I, I've, I've not used this one yet, but with this 174, I've used this with this, even though it weighs sensor. I've used that uh, successfully on my refractor for the last year. So with their... Um, filter drawer. But the reason I bought this was because of that larger aperture here, which still doesn't cover that full sensor, but it's a significant jump. Probably, probably twice the area. So, probably twice the area here that I can utilize. So, it looks to be a very high quality piece. And that's the reason why I bought it. So, as another comparison, um, I have here the Celestron off-axis guider, which is very beefy. Now, I've had this for a while, and I've only used it a couple of times. Um, but this has some major advantages and some major disadvantages, and by and large, it, it, it really isn't very useful on refractors for one simple reason is it's too thick. Um, this is the M48 adapter, and it has 
uh, several when they sell several optional ones. One of the advantages is this can be turned 360 for camera rotation and you don't have to worry about those three things that both of these use for these three of them. The, that only can, can move a little bit and then you have to reposition it. So that can be useful. Um, it has a 12 by 12 millimeter sensor. It has a built-in helical focuser. And as you can see down in there, get the light. See down in there. It's a very large sensor, which pretty much lets you use your entire 174 mm. Um, however, the thickness of this I believe it's 46 millimeters. Let's go ahead and measure that. And that's the killer problem right there. If you really can't use it with a 46.35 is what I'm coming up with here, but yeah, I think the literature calls it 46, so somewhere in that range. Um, you certainly can't use it with a filter drawer and achieve a 55 millimeter back focus. In fact, even attaching this camera, which has different threads, this is the M, uh, what is this? Yeah, I would use this M42 version to, to attach to this camera, but you can, it has, it has numerous adapters. Um, using this to attach to this 17.5 plus 46.3 and you're way over 55 millimeters back up. So for something like a Richie Critchian or uh, a Schmidt Cache Grain Telescope where you have much more back focus to deal with and or where the mirror moves uh, for focusing, that's where you're gonna want this. The other idea is the longer the focal length, the more you need a larger sensor. Otherwise, you could literally get to the point where your guide camera can't even find any suitable stars to guide from if you're at a super long focal length. Um, and that's why I originally bought this. Uh, but, you know, calculating back focus in there, that's a different challenge than with a refractor. Um, So one of the things that I have thought about uh, with this when it comes to a filter drawer is even though it does have a, a larger thickness, um, there is a possibility for you to be able to, to put this if you're having um, backspacing issues. If it is not too long enough and you can use it by itself, but you still want to add a filter, there's enough depth down in here that you could make a 3D printed uh, adapter. You just friction fit, stick it down in there that you can take and screw your filter down in. It's attached to your camera if you have to swap your filters out even you can get your, your fingers down there, it's a little tight. You could do that. I, now I haven't, I haven't used this off-axis guider in a while because I haven't been um, using my Schmidt Cassegrain for anything other than planetary recently, but like for galaxies or whatever. Uh, the long focal length, this, this can be useful um, with that large opening there with the ASI 174mm Mini. Um, and at some point I'll probably add that filter in there. But um, I've been using my refractors much more recently. So, the thickness here, let's, let's measure the thickness difference. Thirty seven point three four. Thirty seven point three four. Thirty seven point three four. So the ASCAR version. 37.48 7.46 7.48 7.46 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 7.48 
or five. So this is about a, a what is that? Tenth of a millimeter difference. You can get shims, but for the most part, that's that's within the, the amount of error. When you add that to the 17.5 millimeter backspacing that is found in these type of cameras, that equates to 55 millimeter back focus. So I like the um, I like the machining better on this version. It feels beefier. Uh, we'll see how well it works in practice. One of the things I wanted to do was compare the uh, the filter drawers. How easy it is to put a filter in these. So this is a smaller diameter, and it can be difficult here in my kitchen with good lighting it's easy pretty easy for me to get a filter once I get it started let's get my phone in there but you really can't you really have a difficult time so this would be hard to do with gloves I do not recommend doing it outside This being a larger diameter meant for M54, or not meant for, but with the ability, there's more room to get your fingers around. It is easier to put the filter in there. Careful not to touch the front. Dusty filter. Well, there I went and did it. I touched it. Better to use gloves with this. Let's see if I can to make new flats. <laughs> Clean that off and make new flats. So I think this is gonna work out great. And this one works just fine too. It's just that aperture is much better suited be working with the ASI 29mm Mini with a smaller sensor here. But with the larger sensor of the 174mm Mini, it's much better suited to this one or even that Celestron. And that is the main difference and the main reason why I bought this. So I'll have to check it out in the field and see how well it works. Thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully this won't be my my last comparison video. Just getting started here, but uh, these can be kind of tricky to to think about how they're set up, and hopefully this answers some of your questions. Thanks for watching.